day in the life of a monk is uh, an encounter with God's Word that's repeated and repeated. It's like embroidering your day with Scripture. When we start at 5.10 in the morning here in the church, the first words that, that are come out of the mouth are, O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. And then you say it three times. O Lord, open my lips. And the object then is to take the day which is given us by God and to have the Word of God at the beginning and then to surround every part of that day with the Word of God so that the day belongs to God. Uh, it, it's a wonderful way to, to divide your day and embroider your day. Uh, it's delicious. The monastic, the monk, is engaged with in deep prayer for the world. The monasticism is many things and is not well understood in any of those things. The life of monasticism is about being all of one piece as a member of the body of Christ in one's individual life. We just simply exist for people to come and share the life here. A lot of people say to me, well, what's going on at the monastery? And I always say, absolutely nothing. That's what, it, it's a monastery. Nothing's going on, nothing's changing. Men and women in communities engaged in continuous prayer um, for the world. Bible reading, time to listen, time to think about it, time to pray, time to sing. The monastery deliberately posits a counterpoint. You know, it is to say, no, biggest house on the block doesn't count. Simplicity counts. All monasteries should be a place where our activity, our focus on the Word of God and on the sacraments of the Church and on the liturgy makes people aware of a hidden presence of something, a powerful fire at the heart of all existence, which we name as God. live here, you need to have a kind of, of calling from God. You have to feel that God wants you to be here and to join in this life of prayer. The thing I love the most about living here, which I think is, is the most important, is the uh, liturgical life of the community, as I think that is for every, uh, every monastery. It structures your engagement with the Word of God. We pray the entire Psalter in a week, so that we pray so many Psalms every day, and then we repeat the pattern. That way, instead of being print on the page of a book, it becomes some, a matter of the heart. Uh, and as you repeat it, and as you rehearse it, and say it again and again, pretty soon it's a part of you. And that's the object of the repetition so that the Word of God works its way into you and forms you from the inside out. I'm not sure we are smarter than the people in the ancient world were. What they knew and what they learned is still vital for us today. Holding on to the value of the old ensures a secure way of, of progressing. The monk is, is like a, a, a lighthouse, you could say, uh, to the world, the light of Christ. This lifestyle posits itself over against everything else and says, no, first, you know, 
to worship God, to be related to the one who formed you in the womb, who knows you through and through, and the one who meets you at the end of your life. Psalm 90 says, uh, let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and prosper the work of our hands. And when I hear that verse, I always think of what I do here in the wood shop. That's exactly what the, the monastic is doing. He is making God real in the world. He is taking the, the words that Jesus taught, and the words that we repeat in creeds and in, in lessons and in confessions, and making them concrete in the world. We make God real in the world by our, our living together, by our praying together. And so I think of the woodworking as an extension of that. The tools that we use in the life of the monastery in terms of cooking or gardening or field work or, or the shops, are just as important as the tools we use when we stand at the altar and lift the chalice and, and hold up the, the, the bread and the, the wine. All those tools are supposed to be regarded just the same as the tools that we use in the shop. The two are supposed to be interchangeable and, and they are imbued with the, the power of God's Spirit for the work that makes God real in the world. And so those tools over there, these tools in here, and all the other tools I have are really just an extension of the tools that we see when we go to Eucharist. Remember when I first started coming here, it was safe to say a spiritual awakening. I had been interested in monasticism probably for about 10 years. I had read about it when I was studying uh, in music in an art school, and I had found out about Liturgy of the Hours and this idea that there was a community of people who like centered their life on poetry and God and community and eating together. I thought that was just everything. To form a community in Christ for the sake of everyone else, uh, not just for self, but f really for the world. People who are really driven, people who have a lot going on, people who are deeply connected into the technological world. Uh, I think it's important for people like them and uh, people like myself to be able to see beyond our jobs, to take a breather and to be interrupted so that our goals don't become the most important thing in our life. But in that interruption, which I believe to be a holy sight, is where we can remember that there are things much greater. And um, whether it's once a week, or whether it's once a month, or whether it's once a year, I believe that time of reflection and, and to remember that there is something beyond our job is super important. To bring people together uh, with a broader vision now, you know, ecumenically, so that people are uh, Roman Catholics and Lutherans and Methodists and Presbyterians and nothings, you know, can all be in one place. And so that there is then that conversation. You have to talk. You have to share. You have to learn from each other. In the end, we are all God's children. And God help us, we really do need to learn how to live together and how better than a place like this. To see it happen here, to pray, to study, to share, to talk, to listen, all of that being done here. I think finding this deeper space and this quiet and connecting to um, that deeper voice has been influenced by the space that, that St. Augustine's has, has created. It's an exciting journey in another way. By staying in one place, you travel in a, in a different way. People who like Tolkien, I've said it's, it's Middle Earth for me. It's, it's another world. I 
feel I'm on a journey and that uh, the routine is not a dead routine, but uh, the routine allows me to travel, explore in, in another way, the inner journey. And um, that's very significant. For you and for all people, let all who are thirsty drink. That's what this is. This is a, a wellspring of renewal, a wellspring of presence, a wellspring you know, of reconciliation. Christ is powerfully present here, uh, daily in the Eucharist and uh, daily in the Word. Um, and we're deeply, deeply grateful for that.